This module will discuss gait interventions for individuals with MS. Gait dysfunction is extremely common in MS. Because of the variability of symptoms, many people with MS can have gait dysfunction for different reasons, including core and lower extremity weakness, spasticity and tone, ataxia, imbalance, cognitive impairments and intention difficulties, sensory changes, decreased endurance, or vestibular dysfunction. Gait changes that occur in people with MS include decreased gait speed and endurance, decreased stride length, cadence, and increased double limb support time, and less efficient lower extremity joint motion and increased cost of walking. Progressive resistance training is one form of exercise that is a focus of a lot of MS literature. Progressive resistance training is based on the ACSM guidelines of increasing workload intensity and duration throughout training programs. Overall, progressive resistance training seems to improve gait speed in people with MS, although the clinically important difference that occurs may not be meaningful. Though few studies stratify patients based on the cause of their gait dysfunction, it is thought that the effects of resistance training on gait would be bigger if the primary cause of an individual's gait deficits were due to muscle weakness, especially secondary muscle weakness as a result of deconditioning. Lower extremity progressive resistance training has also been found to increase gait endurance in people with MS, although studies are limited. Cycling progressive resistance training is another type of training that has been evaluated in the literature, with positive results seen in gait speed as well as other measures that identify balance impairments during gait activities. A few studies examining core strengthening and standing exercises also found improvements in walking endurance. Since core strength and trunk control are prerequisites to walking, core strengthening might be an undertreated impairment in people with MS. In terms of kinematic changes that occur after progressive resistance training, preliminary evidence suggests that step and stride length, gait velocity, step width, and toe clearance may all improve. Three-minute stepping significantly increased in this study, suggesting a correlation between lower extremity strength and optimal gait. When looking at the studies that have been done using progressive resistance training for people with MS, resistance training has been well tolerated, but some guidelines are in place to ensure safety and optimal training programs. Supervised programs have been shown to increase effect sizes more than unsupervised programs, substantiating the need for PTs to work with our patients and not just give them an exercise program and send them on their way. Closed chain exercises should be started first and as strength and coordination improve, open chain exercises can be added. Large muscle groups should be strengthened first, progressively moving towards smaller muscle groups. And multi-joint muscles can provide increased stability before progressing to single joint muscle exercises. The general goal is to start with higher repetitions, about 15, and progress to added weight with only eight to 10 reps. Patients should only start resistance training with one to three sets and can build up to three or four. Also, there should be four to eight exercises in each training session, ideally, ideally focusing on upper extremity, lower extremity, and core muscle groups. These training sessions should be done two to three times a week with at least 24 hours of recovery in between sessions. Aerobic training is another type of exercise that research studies have evaluated to understand its impact on gait. Overall, aerobic training seems to improve gait speed and endurance, although the methods of promoting optimal improvements have still not been determined. Some studies suggest that body weight support treadmill training induces greater changes to gait, whereas treadmill training without support also seems to provide beneficial effects. Different forms of cycling increased walking endurance six weeks after treatment, with the best effects, although non-significant, in the continuous cycling group. Patient tolerance with higher intensity exercise may be an issue, so individualizing aerobic training to patient fatigue and tolerance will help you develop appropriate interventions. The task specificity of aerobic training when measuring gait impairments may contribute to the positive effects of this type of exercise because general aerobic circuit training might not significantly improve gait parameters. Speaking of task specificity, Consistent aerobic programs have shown increased walking speed and distance in people with MS who complain of fatigue and who are more physically impaired. 
Bodyweight support treadmill training increased gait speed in people with progressive MS, but may not improve gait speed more than overground walking programs. Understanding your patient's interests and providing task-specific interventions using available equipment to maximize safety and challenge helps create effective treatment plans for each of your patients. All of the following are types of aerobic exercise that you can consider for your patients with MS. Aerobic exercise for people with MS should begin two to three times a week at 60 to 80 percent of the maximum heart rate for about 10 to 40 minutes at a time. Duration, intensity, and frequency can increase as patient tolerance increases, but rest breaks are important since intermittent training has been found to increase overall physical activity tolerance in people with MS. Combined resistance and aerobic training is well tolerated in people with MS, but research protocols have been fairly conservative, with no more than four days of training total and at least 24 hours in between training sessions. The overall thoughts for combined training suggest that it can improve gait speed and endurance, but it might not be more effective than only resistance or only aerobic training. Functional electrical stimulation is another intervention that PTs can use with patients who have MS. FES that sends signals to the tibialis anterior to dorsiflex the foot significantly increases walking speed and decreases energy expenditure during gait activities. However, FES use should be continued after training if the equipment is available because training effects seem to decrease without it. FES cycling also may provide transferable changes in gait speed and endurance for individuals with MS. The walk aid, a type of FES, significantly improved gait speed and endurance in people with MS. There are many different types of FES, including the Bioness, NMES, the FES cycle, and the walk aid. Static and dynamic AFOs often make people with MS walk more slowly. Another study found that AFOs did not improve gait velocity in individuals with MS who had dorsiflexion and eversion weakness. However, one study found that optimal AFO stiffness can decrease energy cost of gait and improve gait mechanics. Ampura is a medication that is indicated to increase walking speed in people with MS. The research suggests that there are two groups of MS patients when it comes to Ampura responders and non-responders. Although the criteria for these two groups has not been determined, patients who are responders and take Ampira might be able to make great gains in gait parameters during physical therapy intervention. Community aquatics and rhythmic auditory stimulation are two other interventions that have been shown to improve gait in people with MS. In conclusion, research suggests that progressive resistance training, aerobic exercise, combined training, functional electrical stimulation, custom AFOs, Ampira, group aquatic therapy, or rhythmic auditory stimulation can have modest to significant effects on gait speed, endurance, or motion. Considering the available equipment and modalities at your clinic, as well as the individual needs and specific impairments of your patients, will help you choose the appropriate interventions to improve gait in people with MS that you work with. This concludes the module for gait interventions for people with MS. Please proceed to the module post-test and continue to explore the remaining modules that interest you.